600 KCOL.com. Laura Carno joins me on the hotline. Uh, Laura, welcome into the program. Hey, good morning, Jimmy. You're probably excited. You always, every Tuesday, uh, Wednesday morning, you wake up wanting to know what happened at the Greeley City <laughs> Council meeting. Well, actually, listening to your show earlier this week and hearing about that story is uh, what made me think that you might be interested in, in the story you and I are going to talk about. Powdered alcohol. Uh, I've never heard of powdered alcohol. I've heard of alcohol. Believe me, I've heard of it in many <laughs> forms and many fashions and uh, many days of the week and many times of day. Uh, powdered alcohol. Tell me what it is and tell me what the story is here. Sure. So I ran across this story uh, in December um, because there's a state legislator who wants to ban powdered alcohol. And I said the same thing as you said, what the heck is powdered alcohol? Never heard of it. Um, it's because it's not out on the market yet. So there's this guy... Um, an entrepreneur named Mark Phillips, and he's a hiker and likes to go on day-long hikes, backpack trips overnight, and when he gets to the end of his uh, day, he wants to have kick back and have a drink around the fire, but carrying um, alcohol with you as a backpacker is heavy. So he developed, with his own time and treasure, powdered alcohol. So it's it comes in a, if you um, picture, let's say, a Lipton onion soup mix, envelope. Yeah. Um, it's about that big. And on his website, palcohol.com, which is just alcohol with a P, um, he demonstrates all of this. So it's about that size, but it's wider on the bottom. It's actually quite a big envelope, but it's nice and light so you can carry it with you. So he goes through all of the process, gets his, his permits, his licenses, his whatever hoops he had to jump through for that. And he, um, you know, launches this website, all of a sudden the entire country comes undone (laughs) that, um, (laughs) that this is going to ruin children. And and he goes, he goes through and demonstrates on this video. If a child was going to sneak this into the movies or pour this on their breakfast cereal, they'd be smarter to get one of those little shot bottles that you get on the airplane rather than this big thing of powder, which is going to burn if you, if you were swallowing it without it being uh, mixed with water. So this, this state representative, um, to be sworn in today, named Joanne Winholtz, is sponsoring a bill to ban powdered alcohol in Colorado. And she says it's prudent for states to ban the product until they know how it can affect people. And she is a Republican. I am also a Republican. And after Colorado did some great work in 2013, recalling a couple of state senators and and then causing another one to quit instead of being recalled, over products that some people think might be dangerous, and we the left used that exact same argument against gun owners. Well, it might be dangerous. Um, I'm not okay with a Republican uh, saying that she's going to try and ban this. So I'm paying close attention to this. You know, it's the same thing that Greeley. I, I, I'm not saying that. Sm- I think smoking cigarettes bad for your health. I think the jury is still out on vapor cigarettes, e-cigarettes. It's a water vapor. Yeah, I think it's probably going to end up proving to be a heck of a lot uh, better. For for you than uh, unfiltered camels, but I don't know. Uh, but Greeley's doing the same thing. Greeley says, uh, well, it might be dangerous. They think even second or third hand smoke, which makes no sense at all, uh, but they, they think that could harm you and they're going to ban this. And it, it's this argument that we we got to stop it somewhere that it's kind of like pre thought, pre crime thinking, or pre harm to the society. If we judge it to be pre harmful, doggone it, we're going to put a ban on it. And you got a Republican doing this. This is wrong. Right, right. And why don't we just wrap ourselves in bubble wrap and roll down the street? Um, I, I think that's what some of these legislators would, would like us to do. Um, but, you know, alcohol is a legal product. This is alcohol minus the water. This isn't a revolutionary product. It's simply alcohol. And, and they have mixes like a mojito or whatever kind. Of, I don't think they have Bloody Marys. But, um, you know, so you can just add some of the water you're carrying with you already. Um, and so, you know, I look at this guy and I go, okay, he's the American dream. He thought of a product based on a need. He developed this niche used his own time and treasure to um, to develop it, and we should throw him a parade for being part of the innovator class um, of people who take risks and invent something. And, um, and this isn't, by the way, this isn't just Colorado. I'm keeping track of this because I get slightly obsessed with, with topics like this when the government wants to be our, our mother and father. Um, and this is happening all over the country where states are – 
um, banning this and without it even being on the market. You know, I am looking up Joanne Winhold. She's in House District 30 in Colorado. Might be a good uh, welcome to the state legislature uh, call for people to make today. Joanne Winholds, and I will be glad to tweet out that information. But it, it's so interesting how politicians say one thing and do another. Her website, uh, JoanneWinholdsHD30.com. Her motto, her slogan that she went out there and campaigned on was putting people first. And then you go to her key priorities, key priorities, job creation and economic growth. And her first bill that she's going to sponsor is shutting down an entrepreneur's business. Right. Before it has a time, even the time to get out there and get started. And I I don't know about you, Jimmy, but on any topic and e-cigs or or alcohol, I think, fall into this. If somebody has a product and it's really bad, they'll, nobody will buy it, yeah. and they'll go out of business. If it's really that bad a product, um, let, let the market decide. But we don't even get the opportunity to make that decision, um, according to Representative-elect Winholz, uh, because – the, the 100 people at the state legislature are apparently smarter than you and I and all your listeners yeah. um, because we can't decide for ourselves. No, she, we don't need to because Ma Winholt's going to decide for us. Uh, that's, and, I, I, and I want to talk about Boehner as well before we run out of time, but I, I, we're going to tweet out this information. Have you heard any feedback from Winholtz or are you just getting on the story? No, I'm just getting on the story. And when I, um, I, let me say it this way, I started talking about it for the last maybe week and a half. And at the time I started, um, I did tag her on um, Facebook in my post, and I don't think she had a Twitter account at that time. But, yeah, I haven't heard anything anything from her. But we, we, we'll stay on it. I think some of my uh, listeners need to give her a call and welcome her, too. Uh, welcome her to the state legislature and let them know that we don't appreciate the nanny state and uh, her, Ma Winholz, <laughs> deciding that she can go to uh, uh, the state capitol and make some decisions for us. We can make them for ourselves. We're all big boys and girls. We put on our big boy and girl pants this morning. Right. And, you know, I like to say that the the Democrats want to be our mother and keep us safe and the Republicans want to be our father and make sure we don't have any fun. Um, and I would just like both <laughs> sides of the aisle to um, admit that we are all grown ups who uh, can take responsibility for our own choices. And, you know, if I buy alcohol and it's a terrible product or if I smoke e-cigs and it's a terrible product, then that's my own dang fault. Yeah. All right. Well, well, I appreciate you bringing your attention. I had somebody had forwarded me this story about a week ago, and evidently I ignored it. Only Laura Carno gets my attention with this story. <laughs> and by the way, before I go for further on Boehner here, uh, your website so that people can keep up with what Laura Carno's doing. Of course, she had udalllied dot com. Uh, the website is. Sure, you can um, find me at lauracarno.com or iamcreatedequal.com. All right, always at work. There's always work to do, and I'm sure even though Mr. Udall has stopped lying, at least uh, on the public dole, uh, you'll be up to some kind of uh, mischievousness, uh, which I I hope to follow along with and and be a part of. Uh, So lauracarno.com or iamcreatedequal.com. Laura, I got to ask you, yesterday's election, John Boehner, not too surprising, but uh, do you have any ray of hope from it? You know, I I actually, as the vote totals were coming in, I followed it on Twitter. I was um, away from my desk, but I was following it on Twitter on my phone very closely. I actually had some hope uh, that there would be enough members with the guts to vote against Boehner. And um, I think the the signs of hope there are that um, he really was in a fight for the speakership and um, was concerned about it and the the biggest challenge since the Civil War. Those are good things. Um, The not-so-good things is I would hope that the members of Congress, especially the new members who were elected on a uh, government-isn't-the-boss-of-me platform by and large, uh, were okay with with going with the status quo. And I, I saw some... Uh, reports of different what different members said why they voted for him you know that they've listened to us but xyz okay fine um it's not uh, this isn't the end of the world in and of itself um if their leverage changes the way that the house is run do i feel super secure about that no but um i don't think it's the the thing that we should um alone bring out all the uh, torches and pitchforks but you know get them ready 
Uh, get them ready. We don't need to tar and feather any member of Congress yet, uh, the Republicans, but uh, we, we might want to start warming up the tar just in case. Right. Oh. Yeah, that's kind of kind of where I am. Have, <laughs> have it at the ready, and I don't mean um, actually assaulting our members. No, no, not at figurative all. Figurative tar and feather. It's all figurative, my friends. For those of you recording the program, as uh, some of you do, it's all figurative. Uh, for this figurative party, are you bringing the pitchfork or the tar and the feather? Yeah, I want to make sure I bring the right thing. <laughs> Why don't I just yeah. bring the palcohol? Um, yeah, if, if we can get palcohol at that time, otherwise we can bring those little shots to put in our tomato juice. That, that hey, it all it all works for <laughs> me. It is five o'clock somewhere, Laura. It's always yeah. five o'clock somewhere. LauraCarno dot com is the website. Laura, it's always a pleasure. Thanks for bringing this to our attention. Uh, Absolutely. We'll, we'll follow up and see if we can get Ma Winholds to uh, sound off on this topic of okay, alcohol. Lovely. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Laura Carno, always up to something, and I appreciate it because I like that kind of person, always up to something. 600kcol.com.